Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. You are watching a Fact TV presentation of the Village of Bellows Falls Trustees Meeting. Today is Tuesday, December 12, 2023. Uh, <clears throat> and we will move on for approval of the minutes of November 14, 2023. I'll move approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made seconded that we would approve the minutes of November 14, 2023. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor would say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And the motion carries. Additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters, matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting. Are there any additions to the agenda? No, nope, all set. Anything? Okay, we'll move on. Public comment. No public comment tonight. Manager's report. So a couple oh, of yeah, no, we got got hand up. oh, I'm sorry. Jamie. Jamie. Hand up. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, hey, for just for a future meeting and possibly um the tri board meeting, I believe coming up in January, is uh future funding or possible future funding of rural Rockingham policing. I know last year it was a contention at uh, town meeting and it was a one-time vote to provide them with $6,000. Uh, the Rockingham uh, meeting last week, uh, there was a little bit of, uh, I don't know, confusion on whether that was helpful or not. There wasn't good data on whether it was. And it seems like for their budget, they're just going to adopt that in the future to put that 6K in there. And I know they did not come to Bellows Falls uh, first before looking at other options of policing and everything. So I just think it needs to, you know, be discussed prior to a town meeting, whether it be Rockingham, Bellows Falls. But just something to look at because if we agree now for six thousand dollars what happens down the road because um all villages and towns throughout the state are having an issue with coverage so if we agree now just to accept the six thousand dollars even though we have a very good policing department here in bellows falls uh down the road if they decide if they need more funding it's already been adopted that we've accepted that little amount and it could just grow in the future. So I think it just needs discussion prior to um, town meeting. Okay, thank you. Yep. Was any other uh, public comment? I'm curious, on that point, I was not around during that discussion. Does anyone on this board know why the Bells Falls Police Department wasn't a considered option for that? We had very preliminary conversations about it at the board level and also internally and based on staffing that it was just not feasible to take on that additional okay, so patrol. The Bells Falls Police Department didn't think they had the capacity to right. respond that's to that correct. request. I say right. that's correct. I, I, I would actually disagree with that because at town meeting, um, there was village trustees in the Rockingham meeting that were surprised and there was discussion and it's recorded that they did, the board didn't even reach out to Bellows Falls. And, and that, that is public record that Rockingham did not reach out to Bellows Falls. And I understand the staffing issue, but I, I would honestly say that discussion did not occur in a public forum so i do have the same memory as jamie there and you know, what was discussed at town meeting i would agree with with jamie in fact the the impression that i got at the, at the uh, town meeting last year when this was being discussed was that uh 
sometime in the past, not last year, but sometime in the past, whether it was five years or whatever, uh, the select board had approached the trustees about this topic, not necessarily the $6,000, but about policing, mm -hmm. and, um, and received a rather cold uh, reception. Um, I I did not uh, get the impression last year last year's meeting that they they actually during their budget proceedings last year actually went to the police department and asked them. I don't I don't think that occurred. I think what what Scott has just reported that must be the current thinking or something. I I don't know. But that certainly wasn't the impression that I got at the end of the meeting last year. I can't. And I agree, Jiggs, that yes, previously, um, five or so years ago, it may have come up and, and it was not a warm reception. However, last year, it was a complete surprise and dumbstruck by uh, audience members that it hadn't been brought up, you know, prior to mm -hmm. the town meeting. So it's just something that uh, I think is important and I understand you know, staffing and everything else. But, um, you know, moving forward, money-wise for all of us, it's going to get more and more difficult between the boards to fund everything that we need. So, thank you. Okay. So, I guess I'll move on to manager's report. Yeah, so a couple things. First of all, thank you to our folks that were working on a water main break, of course, right before and impacting the parade of lights, but it worked out. So appreciated everybody's help with that. Everybody that came in to help with the parade of lights, I think it was a, you know, it's building every year in terms of participation. And certainly this year's was bigger than last year. So overall, I think it's been a, a nice program that's building and I think a nice event for the community. So that, that's been a, a nice positive trend with that. Hopefully we'll see that continue going forward. So that was a, a very nice event for the winter season. We're still, you know, early in the winter. We haven't had any of the real struggles. So I still try to remind folks that, you know, we have winter parking bans. If you haven't bought your parking pass to one of the parking lots for the winter, please go do that. Inevitably, people don't and wait till the first big storm. And then we have to give tickets and, you know, tow cars. And it's an unpleasant first storm of the year. So, it, you know, I always ask people to, think about it and try to get it done beforehand. It certainly makes life a lot easier than having to go and pick up your car somewhere after we've had to tow it off the street during a storm. So that's always appreciated at this time of the year. Um, that was it for now. Okay. I'll move on to the agenda. Uh, item one on the uh, agenda is uh, trespass ordinance update. So I, the council had previously looked at some of the work of the ordinance review committee and one of the issues that's come up in this chapter that we had previously reviewed and had, had discussed, chapter six, which is the offenses against persons of the property, is the idea of trespassing and how trespassing is uh, handled in the state of Vermont. It's a very specific type of activity now that Burlington has sort of established the standard because there have been challenges and various uh, legal actions taken and so this is the current ordinance that is being used in in burlington and in most cases these are instances where people have squatted in public property for lack of a better word so they're either sleeping out of tents sleeping out on the, on the street sleeping in cars those types of things we've had a small scale experience with this not nearly to the scope that burlington has but if you don't have this type of ordinance available to you um, your legal options to get people to, to leave are very limited. So my recommendation is we take this language, ask the Ordinance Review Committee to review this and incorporate that into their proposals that would be a new section in that chapter six, and then that we would bring that back for adoption later on um, after it's, it's received its full uh, review through the committee as well as then through the attorney. So I would uh, entertain a motion uh, to ask the Ordinance Review Committee to meet and consider adopting an ordinance like 
the attached Burlington language and procedures for unlawful trespass. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? No second. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor would say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Move on to item two on the agenda, broker options for mixed use development in Bellows Falls. So we had a conversation at the last meeting and uh, the, the board had some very specific questions that they needed some additional information on. So Gary spent some time uh, working on, on some responses to that. So we included some updated material in your packet and, and Gary's here this evening, so maybe he can take it from, from there. Sure, so um, I, I realized um, after um, having the discussion here and hearing concerns that uh, while we've been working on these things for a few years that it was um, you know kind of uh, short to when when we came to this board and um, uh, with the proposal <clears throat> so um, just wanted to <clears throat> talk a little bit about <clears throat> um, the uh, the area-wide plan development that we have and <clears throat> the challenge with uh, with larger developments and private uh, private investment so uh, over a, a few decades, what we've um, <clears throat> development that we've had for uh, uh, private capital, large businesses, uh, if you look at Chroma, if you look at Sonax, they all started locally in, in people's garages, in the small um, incubators on the island, uh, and grew into large organizations. No, no one came in with 10 or $20 million and said, we will, we want to invest $20 million in the Bellows Falls facility and plop it down. All of our large developments have been uh, subsidized with the uh, uh, low-income housing tax credits. Um, if you look at um, the Exeter block, the Howard block, the uh, uh, Canal Street, the um, uh, Riverview. <coughs> um, so, uh, <coughs> um, so I, I do, uh, like, there, there's a lot of questions, like what, why, um, why don't we just recruit a, uh, someone to come in and, and make the investment and, and do the work? Why spend a lot of money on soft costs? What's, what's the point of um, uh, paying for people that aren't uh, digging in the ground, doing uh, uh, bricks and mortar and, and that sort of thing? And so um, th there is a challenge getting that <clears throat> level of investment in Bellows Falls, t typically in Vermont, uh, Chittenden County, and especially around Burlington, um, is uh, attractive to investors, but for the rest of Vermont, um, the uh, the profit margins, the gains that people make are um, are, are pretty small. It, 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 it's hard to identify people that have ten or twenty million dollars to invest to want to um, uh, come to Bellows Falls and do that. It is, um, uh -huh. and as you folks mentioned at the last meeting. We have been, uh, as a community, looking at uh, some of these developments for for decades, and it, it, it hasn't been able to happen. And um, another uh, concern that was brought up was um, uh, why should uh, should Bell's Falls invest in uh, development that it, that is a, a town job? And so. Um, <clears throat> Uh, looking at uh, at the tax rates, um, the uh, uh, for a Bellows Falls resident, I pay uh, Rockingham taxes and I pay Bellows Falls taxes, and I pay about four times as much uh, in town taxes as I pay in village taxes. And um, the way the ARPA funds are distributed, um, they do it. Uh, wholly on on um, which municipal government, well, what's the primary municipal government of where you live. So when I live in Bellows Falls, none of the ARPA money that counts for my head, so to speak, goes to the town. 100% of it goes to the village. So um, I, I do, you, you folks have been putting a lot of, um, uh, I think the over $400,000 the request of village ARPA money to projects that would be typically seen as the town 
Um, but I, but I, did, I, I think that's, um, uh, it is fair also, um, just given that um, it, it's not the same as village taxes, the, the village ARPA. Um, and um, another um, uh, aspect that was brought up was uh, the, um, both I think for, uh, for the high cost and for um, competitive reasons and for knowledge of the area for local, um, folks wanted to see another proposal. So we did uh, um, M&S Development, who's out of Brattleboro, um, operated by Stevens Associates, and, and we know their work well. They've done a lot of work, designed a lot of buildings here in our town, and M&S Development is um, you know, that top notch, one of the most respected and successful um, of these types of development companies in Vermont, as is White and Burke. They say that the two of them, any development conferences you go to statewide, they're the two that are used as models, their projects. Um, and so uh, that proposal is in here. Um, and then just in terms of looking at White and Burke <laughs> as a viable alternative, uh, you wanted to see if there was, um, if they've done any work in southern Vermont. Do they, do they really know the area? Um, so this, um, you know, they sent a, it's not an exhaustive list, but over, you know, I don't know, three or four decades of, um, they've done some work in Bellows Falls, Bennington, Bradford, Brattleboro, Cavendish, Fairhaven, uh, White River Junction, and, and the town of Hartford, uh, Killington, Ludlow, um, a lot in Manchester, um, uh, some in Rutland, some in Springfield, um, uh, Stratton, Windsor, and Woodstock uh, a little bit. So, th so they have um, done a fair amount of work uh, in southern Vermont, and so it is, uh, I feel like that they have a good knowledge here, um, and so it's, a, it's, it's fair to compare them as equals, even though one um, corporate office is in southern Vermont, one's corporate office is in northern Vermont. Um, one, one major difference between the two firms, so they, they both uh, start out with the same um, the same basic financial feasibility and due diligence. They want to know, um, you know, is the, is the property developable? What are, what are the site constraints? Um, what size building can you have? How much, uh, how many units can you put on it? What type of revenue will that generate? And is it enough um, uh, to pay the cost that the uh, project will be? And so they, they all do that. Um, physical, uh, environmental, um, due diligence, and financial feasibility. Um, and then, um, and, and so m and development does it for a fixed fee. So that's $30,000, you know what it's gonna cost. And uh, White and Burke does it on a, a time and materials. And um, so it, it looked like the, the cost per hour for you know, different uh, principles is expensive with White and Burke, but that's really, they're, they're covering all their costs. It's their, it's their overhead. It's not like taking a fixed fee when they're saying, this is what we charge per hour for this person working on it. And they did say uh, their project would be, uh, would likely end up in the 30 to $45,000 range. So, um, so a bit more expensive. Um, and uh, some site work, they, they uh, recommended having some budget allocated for geotechnical work on the ground, um, if there's environmental work, which we are going through with the regional, so we to have a grant for that, but um, so, so that's where the $60,000 come from, comes from, and it, it is more expensive than the m &S, but the, the difference being that the next step after feasibility is that uh, White and Burke then works with their network of developers, and this is where the models diverge a little bit. And they're both successful and they're both good models. Um, with White and Burke, they, um, they have the scenario that they've laid out of um, what can be built, what are the costs, and they, um, they market that. They do an RFP out to developers, and they do the, uh, the real estate agreements. And 
Um, you can see from here uh, the, the TIF districts, um, if, uh, when I say from here, sorry, uh, White and Burke's um, work history in southern Vermont. Um, uh, so in Bennington, they did the TIF district, in um, White River Junction, the TIF district, uh, in uh, Springfield, they did the TIF district. And I have, um, I did talk with uh, um, uh, Bob Flint, who worked on the Springfield Feasibility Study and some others, and um, uh, their indication was that what they appreciated about White and Burke in these pieces was um, you can get in real trouble with the development agreements because the, the state uh, education money that you're using to make the public infrastructure improvements um, <clears throat> is agreed to between the developer and the town, and you're spending this money up front that um, is to be paid back out of the incremental increase in taxes 10 years after the five-year period, and there's been projects where the, the public infrastructure um, uh, wasn't done or didn't get didn't get paid, um, just where, where there was some losses because the, the agreement seems like the paperwork, how, how important is that, right? But where, you know, the, the, the um, uh, TIF funded public infrastructure movements couldn't, couldn't get done and ended up coming back, costing the taxpayers more because of how the development agreements are done. So, so just they, the experience is, is worth something. And both of these firms have um, a lot of experience there. The model with um, M&S development, and they did this in the Brooks House, is where you folks are probably most familiar with in Brattleboro, and, and they uh, did it most recently in Bennington, um, is that they they act as the developer, but um, but without the funding. So they don't. We said we don't have deep pockets, but we like to be the developer. We're good at it. So what they do is they do all of the work that we would normally. They they go after the grants. They put the capital stack together. Uh, they build the new market tax credits, uh, so they'll have uh, one to two full-time people working on it for a year, developing these and the pre-development work, getting it done, and then they'll have three to four full-time people working on um, procurement, um, locking the agreements down, um, uh, owners rep in the construction. Um, so in, in right until um, completion, till, till you have a built project. So they're the developers in that way. And so what they ask for uh, to get that done is for the um, uh, community uh, uh, partners that will participate in the lot or community members to raise, uh, or, or the, uh, the, the town, um, uh, to raise uh, $2 million up front so that it pays for the four years of full-time staff to get the development done. So, you know, in, in one group, you're, um, uh, getting outside investors and developers, and um, and that group is paying for it as part of the this first part of the like we're paying for it as part of the, this um, you know thirty to sixty thousand dollars of this project. In the other model, we're getting the feasibility, but the development pieces um, it's a lot more and a lot more intensive, but it's a lot heavier lift financially for the community up front. So that's the basic. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I think just to dovetail on some of Gary's comments, I think the goal here, and we're all trying to figure out what's the best way, is I think when you look at when we were working on the area-wide plan, what's what's the potential impact on us in terms of additional taxes and on the build out of this? And again, these are all projections, right? So we have to take it as as what it is. It's a projection, but they're talking about a million point two eight a year on build out which for us would be a substantial amount of new revenues considering our current tax base. And besides our reliance on the hydro, which is critical and very important, this would be our next largest participator in terms of helping to diversify for just the individual property owners that are bearing you know, that burden of, of all the other services that we're trying to provide. Um, so it's a little bit of a, it's a process it's it's com it's complex. It's Vermont, so everybody has an opinion in lots of land use that we have to go through. Um, but it has been done successfully, and, and it can be done. Um, this is sort of the baby steps to get into the longer term 
development, as Gary said, into the nuts and bolts of where this could go. Any questions or comments? So, a, a clarifying question is looking at the um, MS proposal, right? It's $30,000 for stage 1A, right? And then there's three other stages that presumably have costs for, for the village as well as we walk down that road. And I'm assuming White and Burke has a similar structure where it's thirty to forty five thousand dollars now, but full project completion, those costs are going to be greater. Or no. No. Well, don't they have a supplemental fee that comes so, back at the end after build out? So um, they do. The the costs um, for Whitenberg to do, to do the work, they um, when they complete this um, phase of the work, um, they're done for the time being. Um, once the uh, project is built and fully leased out and earning revenue, they um, if the project is worth more than so much, which it, it will be, mm -hmm. something like a couple million dollars, they ask for a cut or a percentage. At the end. And that's a max, up to a max, right? Yeah, and that's for so many years, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not. I remember, right? 3% up to, not to exceed $200,000. Right. It's a cap. Yeah, it's a cap. So the project succeeds, it's fully built out, it's fully rented. I gotcha. You're earning taxes, they ask for, yeah, a, another, but they, and they also, anything that was spent in this first phase and feasibility, they take um, out of that. They, so, say it costs forty five thousand dollars, they would take up to one hundred and fifty five thousand mm -hmm. as a cut. I see. So their potential max cost would be two hundred thousand dollars if the assessed value of the project is more than two million. Two million within six years of right. completion. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's a nine. Did you count? Yeah. yeah. Any other? Comments, discussions? Yeah, Jake. I, the, uh, uh, the project itself, this mixed use development, say, whatever whatever that means, I don't know what that means. Uh, I, I guess it means it's it's more than just residential. Or, you know. It's like our downtown buildings. You have commercial vibrancy on the street level and uh, places to live above, floors above it. Right. And so it'd be a like a retail and and uh, and, and housing. Uh, the uh, I think that the timing of this of this request is is I think uh, based on the fact that we've got ARPA funds. Uh, I I do believe that, and I think that the. Um, uh, this is a, if this project does have merit, I, I have no idea whether it has merit or not. Uh, I think this is a town-wide project. This is not a village of Bells Falls trustees project. This is a town of Rockingham project. And so my feeling is this discussion or this request should, should be being presented to the select board, not to the village trustees, but of course, as, as I just said previously, the fact that we haven't allocated all of our ARPA money, you're coming to us. Okay, so I think that's that's not correct. Uh, the the ARPA funds, as you correctly state, uh, were designated to the municipalities where the people live. And so uh, rural Rockingham got a piece, Saxon River got a piece, and Dulles Falls got a piece. Uh, so far, we've committed by my calculation, about <clears throat> about four hundred thousand, I could be off. The I had down on my list uh, the uh, draft investment, the um, uh, housing, the housing, the one hundred fifty for the housing, the forty thousand for the borex, uh, the fifty eight thousand for the roof. Uh, so one hundred forty, fifty eight, one hundred fifty, forty thousand. Uh, is about right around 400,000 of the 800,000 where we have taken this allocation to the taxpayers of Bellows Falls and we've chosen to invest it 
on things that would benefit the town. Obviously, it will, invest in, 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 it will benefit Bells Falls people, but it also benefits the other two areas that receive funding. That uh, so, you know, my feeling is uh, I have I, as I said, I, I'm not able, not sophisticated enough to be able to uh, speak to the merits of the project. But my feeling is that the it, if it does have merit, then it clearly ought to be a town thing. Should not come out of our uh, remaining four hundred thousand. That we ought to spend that four hundred thousand specifically on things that are going to benefit Bellows Falls taxpayers. Uh, I have supported all the other votes because I do think there is benefit, and I'm happy to have the, the other Rockingham residents enjoy the fruits of that benefit. Uh, but I do think it's time for us to focus on the Dallas Falls tax fair. How does it not support Dallas Falls residents? Well, first of all, I, I'm not sure that it's a viable concept. Okay, so I'm, if, it was, if it was like the request for the sewer treatment plan, I know these are expenditures that need to be made, made and I know it will benefit uh, us for, for now and in, into the future. Uh, this is a uh, uh, a phase one of a of a hope for type of project which like I said I I don't see uh, I'm not able to evaluate the, the benefit. If if it was a successful project then as Gary rightfully said the taxpayers uh, uh, the Rockingham taxpayers would get 80% of the revenue, of which we're part, and the Bellas Falls taxpayers would get 20%. So uh, it's a, uh, it's a it, if, like I said, if it has merit, it's a great thing for the town of Rockingham to do. But uh, anyway, so it's, it, that's, like I say, I'm not opposed to the project. I don't know if it has merit or not, <clears throat> but I think we've spent half of our money so far on Rockingham Town things, and I think we ought to spend the rest of it on Bellas Falls thing. So so with this project, it would be pretty much half and half. It, this would make it 448,000 on those projects you named earlier for the town, and would leave like 432,000, I think, for the remaining for the others. So that would be on the yeah. Yeah. Of course, they've got you know, they've got the steps, which is a rocking, again, a, a rocking hip thing on the list. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's that's probably right. I, I, you know, 464, 54, 60, would, would, it would add up to that. So, any other comments, <clears throat> discussion? Um, I guess just a little better response than my own thoughts. I'm totally sensitive to those those concerns, my perspective on this money is that it is, it's, right, it's one time money that we're not going to see it again. To, as has been discussed, it's, we, Bellows Falls has gotten the majority of that funding because um, we have the majority of residents. And so I guess from my perspective, I'm comfortable spending it on funds that are, right, keep the stairs, for example, right? It's a town responsibility, certainly. I walk those stairs a lot, and as a as a villager, I would see a lot of benefit from that project. And I I don't know if I necessarily like the <laughs> the town and village thing is still hard for me as a as a new relative newcomer to pretty ridiculous. It, yes, yes, yes. Um, ridiculous. And so it is part of me when I have, when we have this discussion is a little bit of frustration of why do we need to be kind of splitting these there, but. Uh, I, I completely hear you that there are financial implications that um, I don't want to stay completely ignorant to. But I, I don't have, I guess I don't have those concerns about moving forward on this project. I think if it's adding vibrancy to downtown Bellows Falls, the primary beneficiaries of that are going to be the residents of Bellows Falls. Um, a question I did have though off of that, I guess. Going back, to, I, a concern I have is we approve this project, we spend this money, and then there's going to be additional investments that mm -hmm. the municipal government is going to need to make. And what I don't want to have happen is 
Rockingham Select Board says we didn't do this project, right? We're not going to, right? I don't want to start something that we can't finish or if there isn't buy-in from the Select Board. I don't know if you can say that's not a problem, like this is the month. I think there's significant buy-in and investment by the Rockingham Select Board in the village downtown as a concept, right? We're rebuilding the depot street bridge, which is a significant amount of funds. The investment and in ownership of the train station and the reinvigoration of that, which is a big, sort of a, a linked project to this larger area-wide plan. So all of those things, I think, are, are, are leverages. And then also the Vilas Bridge, which is a third piece of that. So when we get into infrastructure and investment, I think the commitment is there to support the investment and specifically support it as it relates to the downtown. <laughs> um, if I'm a resident of rural Rockingham, I might question what do I need to support the Depot Street Bridge? And, and I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's important to have a vibrant downtown if you want to have a, a vibrant community. Mm -hmm. um, so those those are the arguments, but on, on its face, you're right, it's a difficult uh, proposition to, to say dollar for dollar. But that's, you know, just those projects that we just discussed is about a $40 million commitment in federal monies, town monies, and state monies. So this is trying to leverage all of that investment by saying, can we get the private sector involved, which is the other goal of this process, right? right. As Gary has said, we, we always have to go and try to grab the grants and grab the state funding and get the low mod income funding. This case, we're not asking to do that. You know, we want to develop a host of low income housing and, and put it on the island. We want to develop market rate, mm -hmm. new housing that will also have other components that make it a vibrant neighborhood and, and an actual uh, enhancement to our downtown and, and actually build out the community and make it more robust. And if that's a 40 or $50 million investment on top of a $50 million or $40 million investment in other public funds, that's a huge amount of money being pumped back into the village. And ultimately, I think that benefits all of us when we really get right down to it. Now, that doesn't happen overnight, and Jigs is 100% correct in terms of there is a road to get there. It's not a guarantee. But I think we've seen enough progress and feel good that we've made enough investment that this now is the right time to put us on the road to that, to see if we can put all of these pieces together and make that happen. Um, the area-wide plan's been in the works for over a decade, hasn't it? Um, no, it was uh, 2020 and 2021, um, and the select board did uh, participate in it. Well, I and remember, I remember the charrette that we did. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So there were what four meetings or something? Yeah. But I thought that the, the of the island oh yes yeah. so there yeah 2013 there was a um uh island street redevelopment mm -hmm. planning which went into the um uh the the uh, results of that are certainly incorporated into the presentations and thinking and um, uh, results of the area-wide plan um, as are the 2002 and 2007 studies under the hill on the Grist Mill, TLR1, and Flint area, which are part of the area one plan. So, so it's true. There's over um, uh, probably over 20 years of um, planning that right. went into the area wide plan, which was public process that involved um, the, the the rail folks, the hydro folks, the select board, the stakeholders, business owners, landowners. Um, yeah, it seems to me like the the timing. Right now, there's a momentum in town that we haven't seen in a long time, as far as interest from the outside, investment from the outside. You know, the shortest four years ago, I did a little conference up north, and it was like, what's going on? And now it's like, how have you guys turned it around? And now we're going to be hosting a historic preservation conference here next year with probably 300 participants from around the state. There'll be uh, you know, communities that have the, you know, have similar challenges, but also have done projects that are on these sheets. And for me, the, if we were talking about generating tax revenue to pay for this, then I think, you know, splitting hairs would be 
appropriate, but as far as how do we get on the road to making the development possible, $60,000 for our $250,000 tax revenue seems to be like a small investment. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? Because I think Jamie had something. Yeah, I, 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 okay, I saw see. that. Okay. Jamie? Yeah, so um, this company or whatever that's going to come in and do feasibility or whatever, what is their liability if they happen to miss something during their study? And understand there's one person to eight people that are going to be working and filing grants and, and, and doing their due diligence. But, you know, the thirty to $60,000... What happens down the road if something is missed during the process and all of a sudden they're coming back for more money and say, we missed this. And Scott alluded to a point uh, regarding the train station and ownership of that. Uh, we've run into several issues with right of ways and, you know, being able to have ownership of that, I believe that there's some ground contamination um, that I think was brought up a year or two ago during the main presentation of that. So does this company that's going to come in and do all of this for us, do they hold any liability or are they going to come back to the board six, eight months to a year from now and say, oh, by the way, we missed this and we're going to need another fifty, dollars $100,000 to finish this or apply for additional permits or grants or whatever. So, so I would say there's, there's two, there's two different companies here, um, that submitted proposals and, um, in one of them, that scenario, um, would be possible because they will be doing work beyond this contract. If, if we kept on with them, um, but they, uh, they look for a, a pile up of money up front to pay their full-time employees uh, that do the work and address the issues as they come up. I, I, would, I would almost guarantee that all of the scenarios you're, you're talking about are gonna, um, are gonna come up in, in any <coughs> d development projects. I, I, would, I would say to expect um, uh, when we were building the uh, Connecticut River Transit Facility, the, the guy who was the president of that board was a, the real estate developer at Okemo. Uh, and he said, as long as you expect 100 things to go wrong a day, uh, you'll be, you won't be disappointed. And um, in terms of liability, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think that goes along with these. I, I can't speak to that. I'm, I'm sure our town attorney will be involved in any contracts and agreements that we make um but the uh and then the other company the white and burke um they don't uh they're not in it after the um the 30 to sixty thousand uh, dollars making the um uh, working on the development agreements um once that project is rolling they're uh they're not in it anymore okay so so in reality, we're talking thirty to sixty thousand, but that ARPA money and everything else could go away, and we could be moving on with this project. And all of a sudden, we're looking for a hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand uh, dollars more for whatever issues arise, and that's going to fall on Bellows Falls. Whereas Jigs mentioned, you know. Maybe this is more of a Rockingham thing. And that's all I'm saying. I, I mean, down the road, we have to look at having a nest egg there to if we run into something, it could cost the taxpayers more money after this company is long gone and have already grabbed their thirty or sixty thousand dollars. That's all I'm saying. I guess, Jamie, the only, the only comment I'll make to that is they have a pretty long list of successful projects and they're still active in the real estate development business. So I think that their track record speaks to pretty
pretty sound business practices, but every development is challenging. I think Gary pointed that out. There are no guarantees, nothing is 100%, but certainly the one thing I can guarantee is if we don't move forward, nothing will happen. <laughs> that is the one guarantee we can, we can all agree on. And that just creates more time and more cost as, as, as things become uh, degraded or more expensive to uh, try and rebuild. So, no, and, and, and great, great point, Scott. And I, I agree with it a hundred percent. But with any project or anything, what is the worst that could happen? It doesn't matter. Uh, you can run the race a hundred times and have no issues or anything, but it's that hundred and first race where you run into an issue. So we we just need to look at having possibly a reserve or something set up so it's not a big surprise if there is an issue down the road right i mean i understand everybody's going out to do their best every day nobody's looking to miss something a missed opportunity but we just have to plan on what's the worst that could happen so all right thanks Thanks. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. These usually have these projects. Well, <laughs> my understanding of this preliminary step is to determine feasibility. Is the site buildable? Does it have contamination? Are there geologic restrictions? Is it going to affect the canal? All those sorts of things. And then, if the green light is given that it's developable then it's sent out to bid to a construction company, a developer that says, yes, we can build this. It's gonna be $40 million. And there's always contingencies of like 10% in some development projects for the inevitable thing. There's gonna be cost escalations, what they you know, originally thought. And there's, there's always, projects always change in some way and it's, it's always a moving piece, but I think there are contingencies that are part of the legal contract from the outset to cover those things that may be anticipated, but they're not known or identified. Yeah, I, I think if you look at the MS proposal, if you look at there's multiple stages to find in there, and at each stage there's a decision point to go or no go. Yeah. So I think that you have, from a risk management standpoint, and again, I fully understand that there is no 100% risk-free development process, there just isn't. But I feel like at least there are multiple milestones to where the boards can uh, feasibly say, okay, this makes sense, let's continue, or this is not feasible and you know we, we shouldn't continue right. going forward. So, so I think your risk is managed, but it is still risk. I don't want to downplay correct. that. Concern. So, are the risks different though in the two when you talk about MS and White and Burke's models diverging? It sounds like if we go with MS, we're needing to generate privately or locally up to $2 million to manage, to pay for the management of the development process, not necessarily the development, because that's going to be grants, et cetera. Yes. But then with White yes. Burke, they would be absorbing that. So if you get to these three or four points of moving forward or not, you get to the point where you're not moving forward, is that the risk that the developer takes on by accepting the project through White Burke's process that isn't present mm -hmm. in the MS process? Yes. So in as, as you as you say, in both processes there's budgets, they build a capital stack, there's contingencies, and they're not um, coming back for uh, to taxpayers. Um, and in one model, you have more upfront risk because you're putting in community capital upfront of a, of a couple of million dollars as year. So uh, if you're partway along the the way and you get to a go or no go, and you've been working with people to, to raise some money that um, it, it's been a risk for them and you know maybe they don't lose their money maybe they do but it um, uh, it's, it's definitely a negative and in the other scenario it's a private developer that is signing on to take that 
risk as uh, the, the operator of it. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, it, wait. Just to clarify, is, is the town exhausted all their ARPA monies? All of the town monies have been budgeted so far. Yes, so there is no ARPA that they could. No, they would not. These would have to be operating funds going forward. Okay, I guess I would entertain a motion to allot $60,000 of ARPA funds uh, to the Bridge Street Block Mixed Use Tree Development Work. Is there a motion? I will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, all in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and we will uh, spend $60,000 of ARPA funds on the Bridge Street Lot Mixed Use Pre Development Work. We'll move on to item three on the agenda District 5 issue update. I want to pass out some information. Uh, Wade was at the meeting last night in Westminster, um, so we'll give the board just a quick update. So there's, I think, yeah, there should be a couple pages there. So, weren't sure what we were going to get last night from a publicly noticed meeting of the uh, of the district. Um, a little surprised to basically have, besides myself, Alyssa and Wade. The only other people in that audience were the two officers of the Prudential Committee. So none of the other uh, members of the district appeared, which is a little surprising to me. Uh, so we had a conversation with the select board, or not, uh, with the Westminster board and went through what our program is going forward. Um, so they were in support of that. They actually passed a resolution to uh, have their attorney begin working on the legal requirements for the this, the dissolution of the existing fire district and then for us to go forward with our new um, agreement that we have been discussing that would create a uh, entity that would be basically just like any other of our utility customers and so they were supportive of that and that is the progress that we're going to be uh, that is the path that we will be moving forward with so I do have a bunch of documents that I'll be sending off to our attorney asking him to start drafting that. That will come back to this board. Um, Alyssa still has a host of individual accounts with balances. Um, we're going to be working on a process to collect those funds. We've collected up to almost $20,000 worth of new funds that we're going to be depositing. So we're taking over the checkbook and the billing has been uh, successful to date, as well as updating our uh, liens for whatever else is past due, so that folks that are not going to be up to date will have to pay. And then once we have the new agreement, we have a much more uh, defined process for our utility customers in relationship to how we can define continuing service for people that don't pay their bills. So I think we're on a pretty good path here. Um, it's going to take some work, and we'll certainly be back to you with updates and some of this uh, additional um, work because there's going to be other requirements for us to do at a board level as well as Westminster, but they are committed to working with us. So overall, I thought the meeting was uh, surprisingly um, positive, and uh, I think we're on a, on a good path moving forward. So thank you, which way you might want to give whatever other input since you yeah no it was uh it was not what i uh, just kind of echoing the manager said but um not well attended but for those of us that were there everybody kind of was focused on you know they understood the issue and we just in the best interest to move this thing forward and get all our ducks in a row and so so it was positive it was it was a positive meeting thanks for going scott thanks uh for Really I do. I do orders. agree. It's probably going to take some time to it will. weed it all out, but it will. at least it started. Yep. Yes. Good. And we have a clearly defined path. And yep. we have a partner now with Westminster willing to work with us on this goal. Okay, great. Yes. Yes. The Westminster? No. Or the, or the, town, the town board the voted town. by resolution. Yeah. Okay. Select yeah. board. Okay. Select board, okay. yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if this is the, the proper thing, but the, you know, there was a question of uh, how it was built and, and how it was collected and whether mm -hmm. the funds were deposited, etc. Has Alyssa, uh, is she comfortable that there's been no questionable transactions or well, like, or is that? I don't think either one of us, and she's on, so I'll let her jump on, but I don't think either one of us are comfortable, and I think I probably mm -hmm said 15 times during the course of that meeting that we cannot verify any of this information because it was from accounts that we did not control. And so Alyssa has spent the most time going through the QuickBooks and trying to update the accounts, um, which has taken a tremendous amount of time and a huge amount of effort, which I really appreciate it. So Alyssa, I don't know if you had anything more you wanted to add to Jigs's concerns. She's there. Alyssa, are you there? You need to unmute. <laughs> Maybe she's eating dinner. <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. I don't know how to turn on my um my camera, but that doesn't matter as long as you can hear me. Um, I don't know that I've discovered anything that that seems. I mean, there's lots of things that are inaccurate, but I don't think. I, that it was anything done on purpose. So I, 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 I've, I've cleaned up and, and made some sense of, of some things that were, you know, posted inappropriately or, or what have you and um, things like that. But I, I don't know if there was any mishandling of any money. Quite frankly, part of the problem is, and I gave you guys a handout, when the original agreement was made in 1982, there was a formula for billing. And the formula for billing was based on so much uh, cubic feet of, of um, per use per household. But yet when you look at how it was being billed, it was never consistent to what was actually in the agreement. So it's always been a little bit of a mess, quite frankly. Um, so I showed you what the conversions are for the for the way that the billing should have been versus when we look at bills, we're not billing based on the conversions. So one of the goals here is just like we have a wall pool amount uh, that, that the board sets a rate for, just like we have a um, Kissel Hill amount for that that those those uh, utility users, we would do the exact same thing for the District 5 users, and they would have, an, you know, just like at any one of our other outside entities, they would have that same type of billing arrangement. You guys would set a rate, and that's how it would work going forward. With all the other requirements of being a utility customer, you'd have the right to, you know, come in and negotiate an agreement. If you fail to meet your agreement, we'd have the shutoff procedures, just like we would have with any other customer. And I think then we have a pretty good sense of how this would work going forward. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? If not, I'll move on to item four. The VOREC grant authorization. So the last time the board did uh, allocate funds, this is just a breakdown. I wanted the board to see what the actual uh, grant will incorporate, what was in that grant to make sure that everybody was comfortable with what we're doing. So we're leveraging that investment to get basically a hundred and almost $105,000 worth of different uh, investments. So there's a breakdown on here, what we're going to be doing. And then just as long as the board, the motion here we're requesting is just that once we get the grant application that we authorize myself to sign that so we can continue going forward with the board of grant. Any questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion to authorize the manager to execute the grant application documents for the wayfinding project. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to item five, the update of the ARPA fund projects so a couple of just updates since we last spoke and I think Jigs touched on some of these things the one thing I did add is this $25,000 which is the finalization of the transition for the police server we're moving forward with that project 
we were told in our most recent meeting that our firewalls for not only the police and the fire department, but also for this, uh, for our finance and, and this building, have to be um, updated. They're not going to be supported past March of next year. So we're going to have to add, spend some additional monies. The SOFOS um, firewalls are going away. We're going to have to get new firewalls, which are more sophisticated to deal with some of these newer uh, threats. And unfortunately, these things are becoming more and more, uh, these types of green mail situations are becoming more prevalent. I know a couple, I think a school district most recently had one of these things. A couple other places in Vermont have experienced it. So we're sort of up against time to get, once they stop supporting their their software, what ends up happening is you don't get the security patches and then as these new these new viruses and these new green mail types of uh, malware get updated, you don't have the security to defend yourself against it and that's where you end up having to pay these people to release all of your all of their computer records or whatever, financial records, whatever they can try to uh, hold hostage. So that was the only change that I just is, is that what this 25? Correct. Uh, the other thing, Scott, I noticed in the financials is the the design work for the Sally Port of ten thousand dollars or something like that is shown as as a receipt from ARPA. Is that a different ARPA? Or is that this ARPA? So we're still I know we talked about the Sally Port project. That was the initial first phase. The board didn't want to go forward, so we've got a ten thousand dollar bill, so we just put it in under the operating for now. We'll figure out ultimately what we want to do with that if we go forward. So it's not it's not So right now it. I didn't put it out here to define ARPA specifically. So we'll go forward with that. Well that's possible. Yes, it could though, correct. Right. Okay. But that's not in there. Yes. So this is more for your information. Anything else? Any other comments, questions? Nope. What's the 80K at the bottom of this? So, the balance. The balance. The balance. The balance. Okay. Yeah. But the roof project is We didn't there. put that in there yet either. And that's right. 58,000? Right. Yeah. Anything else on this? If not, I'll move on to item six. Banner application for the Rockin Camp 5K. Central Elementary oh, asked us for that, so yeah. Oh, Is there a second? I'll second. Motion been made, seconded that uh, we approve the banner application for the Rockingham 5K walkway. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Move on to item seven, financials. Liz, are you back? <laughs> yep, I'm here. You're back. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jake's if you uh, we'll start with you if you'd like. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> You know, things are in reasonably good shape. I think that on the revenue side for the general fund, uh, the uh, parking fee, you know, parking space fees, you know, for, for using the municipal lot, we're, we've only collected 53% of our of what our budget was. I hope there's an additional revenue going to come in from that. Right. That's why I was uh, trying to get people to do that before they get towed. Which ties to the other... Right. Part of the revenue that's noticeably under budget, and that's police services, <laughs> uh, which, which if they were issuing tickets, that would uh, uh, that would pump the revenue up on that. But uh, uh, obviously, we don't want to uh, anger our citizenry, but we do uh, we do uh, have a place for uh, yep. for revenues here. So uh, uh, <clears throat> on the expense side. Um, Again, not not much. Uh, I think uh, in and Alyssa, you correct me if I'm wrong, but in the police and fire budgets, there's we're over on 
fire radios and both and equipment for both the police and fire department. But I believe that has to do with our our extraordinary votes that we made, you know, after the budget had been set to fund the right. Yeah, correct. We know about it. Part of the grant will be there as well, but you're right. Right. On the water fund, I had a question on the we show 100,000 of grant revenue, which I think is was a placeholder for lead pipe. Correct. Is that going to is that going to develop in this fiscal year? We have submitted to the EPA invoice for Brian's time for that. You have to go through an account for each of the specific properties that you invoiced and then they give you a a set amount per property. So that worked out to $61,000. So that invoice has been sent to them for approval. And then the balance will be if we have to do any remediation based on that, that would be where the balance of that money would come in, Jake. If we okay. have to actually do so, we, so we may actually show some revenue from that. We will, we should see at least sixty-one thousand, and then if there's more expense, if there's more work related to that, we'll get additional reimbursement for that as well. Good. It was also an item on the water fund under there that it said use of fund balance thirty thousand, and I don't. I don't think I've ever seen that. Hmm. Um, it's, Where, what page are you on, Jake? It's, it's on the waterfront. Okay. Uh, I should have written a page on the page. I'm looking now as you're talking. So. Uh, it's near the end. Or maybe it's not part of the revenue. The, uh, no, it's under projects. Uh, there's under revenue there's use of fund balance 30,000 right We're, yeah so I'm on page one of four under the water yep. farm yep about the middle of the page under, uh, yes, under revenue sources yeah. use of fund balance I, uh, I I'm not familiar with that uh, with that item. Uh, well, I don't remember us doing that, but um, so that's where you put if if um, you want to help subsidize the budget with some of the the leftover money, you know that that's accumulating in the fund. Right. So yeah, you so you you put that in there as a revenue. Um, you know, as a way to help balance your budget if you have extra money. But I think that I think the, the, the method we've been kind of following is that if we do a project like the, the radios for the fire and police department and mm -hmm. we're over, we consciously go over budget, we realize that that if we do end up in a deficit, that's going to come out of our fund balance. Right. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember putting don't that remember in as a budgeted putting... item. I have to go back and look. And just... I don't remember for water why we would do that, but it's there. And I, I mean, I guess I'll go back and look in the um, in the village report to see what it says there. Yeah. We'll go through our budget notes. If yeah. we did it, I don't remember why. Right. To be honest with you. So that. Yeah. Right. So that was. We of... only we normally only do that for tax purposes, and there's no tax in the you yeah. know the water department, so. I don't know. Right, we'll look into that one, Jason. Okay. All right. And uh, then on the sewer fund, <clears throat> the um, uh, the accounts receivable came down a bit, and I'm I'm hoping that Pest is still on schedule for still working through reducing their right. So far, so good. So far, so good. Uh, the septage, you know, in the last several years, our septage revenue has been <coughs> well ahead of budget. This year, it's kind of on budget, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know if the if if our if our estimate of revenues is still a good estimate or whether uh, I think we'll probably do again because most of that money really starts coming in again in, in the spring okay. and, and we're holding our own so we're actually probably a little ahead of where we normally would be for this time of the year and the okay. next 10 days looking like they're going to be decent 
I think we'll probably end up with a pretty heavy set, uh, December as well. Okay. And then the uh, uh, maintenance of the sewer building, we're, we're at 91.9% .9 of our budget. Uh, is that uh, kind of one-time work, or is that just uh, problems that we didn't anticipate? There's been some electrical work that we've had to do that was not anticipated. Um, we're also... Some of that was to isolate some circuits and do some things to help with some of our um, some of some of the machine some of the operations internal operations. We've also had to do a little bit more work in there in, that relates to our our um, SCADA systems and how those are operating. So there's been a little bit of a, a cost there as well to make sure the alarms are, are working through the fiber or through the updated copper. So that's been part of that expense as well. Yeah, okay. The the audit, I would ask Alyssa to look at the audit number because the um, we're, we're actually, we've spent all of the budget and for some reason the budget for audit in the sewer department is 3000 less than the budget for the, the audit in the uh, water. water fund and uh, I don't think we did that. I think we... I thought they were the same. I thought they were the same because yeah. we usually take the... the Budget number and just we, split it. We allocate it right. you know, yeah, between sure. the general fund and the and the three funds. So okay. So uh, it is budgeted wrong, but the the amount spent is the same. Okay, so the the budget went in with the with that four thousand. The budget for the for the water went in at seventy one hundred, but it's We've only spent the four thousand one sixty six sixty seven, the same as with the uh, sewer. Right, I know that, but the yeah. budget for the sewer was only four thousand. That's the... right. Yeah, that was a mistake in the water. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, as as you know, Murphy's law or whatever, that the budget that's that appears to be the most likely to be over budget at this point. Is the sewer fund, right. which of course is the one that was struggling least, to try to get back to it. Right. suitable to have that happen, but uh, that's Murphy's law. So. Anything else, Greg? Right. Anybody on the finances? I had one question. Yeah, on the, the um, on the parks, the the riverfront park, thousand oh. dollars. I'm just curious with that. That that was we moved Rosie the River. Well, that's what I was wondering. Was that? I don't know if that was. I don't think that was it. <clears throat> no. The Riverfront Park. Was that was that the request from the Historical Society to help with the maintenance? Yeah, and Mike. there was a thousand in each budget, right? It was a thousand in village and a thousand in uh, town. A thousand in village, a thousand yeah. in town. Correct. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. So, that. Yeah. yeah, the Rosie the River was done. Yeah. Outside, no budgets yeah. were. Yeah. No yeah. funds were spent. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot they we did that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anything else on financials? Anybody? All right. Then I'm going to move on. Uh, we read. Review agenda items for the next meeting, which is January 9th of 2024. Does anybody have any agenda items they'd like to uh, talk about? Jamie has requested the. Yeah, I think that's for the next one for Tri Board. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anything for we January wanna, 9th? You want to try to finish the article? Can we do that? We should. Yeah, okay. Yes, I'll, I'll have an update on the ARPA. Yeah, because we'll be in the 2024. Yeah, we'll be in the home stretch at that point. Anything else? Yeah, take it. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to re review agenda items for the joint board meeting january 30th of 2024. we are going to discuss um where we stand for tax sale so that'll be an item that we'll have on there um, i'm trying to get the fire visibility people to be here so we can have them interact with the tri board so we're trying to coordinate that for that meeting so i'm hopeful that we can get that done that would be good um yeah it would be, be the easiest way to get everybody in one right in time 
so we're working on that. And there's something else that was a holdover now that I can't remember off the top of my head. So. Anything else by anybody on uh, for the dry board meeting on January 30th of 2024? If not, uh, review and approve orders, bills, and warrants. Didn't have any for tonight, so we're going to the dry board and good for now. Okay. Yep. Then we will move on to other business. Wade, go I ahead. have a comment and a question. Mm -hmm. The comment is that. Which you, I, I know you know, but the um, the south tower is gone, is down. Yeah. Just FYI. Okay. Yeah. But so ne who now owns the electrical that went up there? Is that? I asked it? them to leave that in case we ever want to do something there in the future. Which makes sense. Right. I saw that. That's still there. That right. defense. Defense. I asked them to leave that too in yeah. case we ever want to use it for either. So we else. now do we own that or how does that work? So the lease basically is done. So it's back to non, you know, it's just an unimproved portion of our water holdings up there for lack of a better word. Now, if you didn't ask them, to, would they have taken that too? Oh yeah. If you didn't say, hey, let's leave that, yes, yeah, there. Yep. I tried to get them to leave the little hut, but they had already done some, you know, they had promised that to some other developer. So I wanted the little building. Yeah. I couldn't get that, but I did, they did leave the fencing and all the underground and the underground, yeah. Utility, which is you know, transformers. Along the we line. never know down the road what we might be able to put there. So yeah. at least that's already there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Gigs. I enjoyed the parade of lights. Yes. It's the first year I've been I've here to see it, and uh, it was fun. To Big kudos to Ben Missouri for that because he was a real force. Are you trucking it next year? <clears throat> Well, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm all set. Okay. Scott, do you have anything else for us? No, all set. Okay. Uh, executive session, no, no need. need. Correct. So I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion has been made. I'll second it to adjourn. All in favor would say aye. 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 We are now officially adjourned. This meeting was recorded by Falls Area Community Television, located at One Hospital Court, Bellows Falls, Vermont. If you would like a copy of the meeting, our phone number is 802-463-1613 or email us at fact810 at gmail.com. Falls Area Community TV. Keeping government honest.